Okay, um, this time I'm making a video for binding a bobbin on a uh, vintage Kenmore zigzag sewing machine. Um, there's several different styles of these, but most of them do the bobbin winding on top like this. Um, uh, this one is a uh, Kenmore 1430, apparently the 1431, 1625, 1641, 1940, and 1941 all use the same manual. And so obviously would use the same type of bobbin winding system. Anyway, um, that's this is this is the uh, 1430, but um, this is uh, the Kenmore Stitch 12, and it uh, has this kind of a hand wheel where you need to loosen the center clutch uh, knob of the hand wheel before you wind the bobbin, um, and that's and then uh, you would you know take your thread from here, crisscross it under this, loop it over here, put your bobbin on there loop the thread, bring the thread through the center of the bobbin and up through one of those holes and then snap this over against the hand wheel. So to wind the bobbin, it needs to be over here against the hand wheel. Um, so so when that's that's for winding the bobbin and then you hold that uh, thread that you've put through the center of the hand wheel or up the center of the bobbin, hold it up about three inches above it um, before you start pressing the pedal to make it so. And you will have to turn on the light because that's a safety switch on the Kenmore's and many of the other newer sewing machines. Well, anything from like the 1960s or 70s uh, usually has that kind of a safety switch. Anyway, so hand wheel, center clutch release for uh, machines that have this style of hand wheel, for machines that have this style of hand wheel, um, you have a, uh, for sewing, the hand wheel goes in to wind a bobbin that's supposed to loosen the clutch on these ones. Then you, um, uh, oh, this is going to be fun. I'll have to put the pedal on the floor so I can stand on it to make the video. Sorry. Okay. Um, so holding a camera and, or a phone camera and a thread at the same time and working the machine. Anyway, on this one, notice I've got the thread here. I've got it uh, crisscrossed under the little, this is the tension for the uh, bobbin winding. And then you push this against the bobbin and then you can go ahead, oops, and I forgot to put, turn on the safety switch, didn't I? That was not smart. Oh well, that's all right. I'll just go ahead and wind it now that I've got it started. Um, you may need to put a, um, you may need to go ahead and put a, a, a flannel felt circle or felt circle under the thread to stop the, uh, to make it feed more smoothly off the spool. Um, that also works better when you're sewing too, but um, you don't, normally you don't want to have your hand up here holding the spool. I'm just trying to keep the spool from popping off while this is going ahead and winding, but I don't know if you can see. Oh, that's getting nice and full. And the, most of these will automatically come undone when the bobbin is full. Looks like I'm going to run out of thread on the spool pretty quick. But, oh, nice thread. And we'll, we'll see if we have enough thread for it to kick out. Uh, I think it's, hey, there you go, see? See, it automatically did stop uh, when it was full enough. See, it released by popping this out here. And then to go back to sewing, push your hand wheel back in. If you have this kind of hand wheel, tighten the clutch. Tighten the clutch. Right tight. And that's to re-engage the needle on the machine. By the way, I did not mention it, but um, before you wind a bobbin, I recommend you always unthread your needle. Never, ever leave your hand or any sewing projects under the needle while you're winding a bobbin. Even though the clutch release is supposed to make the needle not uh, go up and down while you're winding the bobbin, over time the clutches kind of get dirty, um, get sticky, and don't release all the way. And so the needle can start going up and down on you while you're in the middle of winding a bobbin. So never ever <laughs> keep stuff under the needle. In my opinion, that's the safe way to do it. It's true that industrial machines are, and, and, and even this, uh, some other kinds of machines are designed so you can wind a bobbin while you sew. Um, however, um, I think for most home sewing, you're better off uh, uh, 
winding your bobbin separately like this and or um, some people like to use the sidewinder bobbin uh, winding mechanism but anyway so that's popped loose there's your bobbin nice and full nice and even and that's what you want you want it to feed evenly but that's what this little tension uh, thing here is for and, and by doing the little crisscross underneath it that helps it uh, to um, wind more evenly but anyway that's how you wind the bobbin on the uh, these Kenmore zigzag sewing machines. Um, and uh, this is Becky Rice Ware, or Rebecca Ware. Um, uh, if you have sewing questions and problems, my blog is tumorfarmer.blogspot.com. Um, and I like to help people with their sewing machines and their sewing machine problems, even though I sometimes forget my words. <laughs> Happy sewing.